Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking for you this evening. The Sensex and the Nifty gained 2% this week, even after a tepid close on Friday. Mid-caps outperform. All sectoral indices end in the green, barring the Nifty PSE index. Gold prices rally to a record high as investors bet on a potential 50 basis point rate cut from the US Fed. Crude oil prices also attempt to rebound after a volatile week. 57 IPOs have raised 67,000 crore rupees so far this year. This is more than 49,000 crore rupees raised by all IPOs in 2023. August has been the best month with 10 offers raising more than 17,000 crores. A Swiss court filings show authorities have frozen over $311 million in accounts allegedly linked to the Adani probe. Appeals court upholds the sequestration of the accounts. Filings show the appellate cited the SEBI show cause notice to Hindenburg and the Supreme Court Expert Committee report as part of the appeal. Adani Group calls the allegations preposterous and says it is not involved in any court proceedings in Switzerland. Sebi Chief Madhubi Puri Butch and her husband deny all allegations of impropriety and conflict of interest made by the Congress party, termed the charges motivated and defamatory. Sebi Chief says she recused herself from all matters related to Agora Advisory or its clients, also says she had disclosed her shareholding in Agora Advisory right from 2017 when she joined Sebi. Global automaker Ford is set to reopen its Chennai plant three years after it was shut down. The company will repurpose the factory for export production. After spending six months in jail, Supreme Court grants bail to Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind K. Jriwal. The two-judge bench is divided on the legality of the arrest by the CBI. Justice Surya Khan says the arrest does not suffer from any procedural infirmity. Justice Bhuyan says it's imperative for the CBI to dispel the notion of being a caged parrot. Thousands of Boeing workers go on strike, crippling the manufacturing of the 737 jets. Workers reject the deal struck between union leaders and the management offering a 25% pay rise over four years. Kamala Harris gains a five-point lead over Donald Trump in the U.S. presidential race after a strong debate performance, according to a Reuters poll. Harris calls for another debate, but Trump rejects the offer. Well, let's start with the market action. The Sensex and the Nifty ended with March losses today after a range-bound trading session, but the mid-cap index did outperform the blue chips. It, in fact, hit a record high in trade. So the Nifty down 32, the Sensex down 70, the Nifty bank up by about 160-odd points, and the mid-cap index gained about 400 points today. Financial stocks also gained, helping the Nifty bank, as we just showed you. Now, for the week, both the Sensex and the Nifty are up 2%. All sectoral indices, barring the Nifty PSE index, ended the week with gains. Prashant joins us now to wrap up the market action. Prashant, uh, uh, you know, the way we've closed, uh, what does the next week look like? Well, a quieter day after yesterday's big, massive rally. The Nifty was listless through the course of the day, never really gave an indication of a big move in either direction. Financials traded better, Bank Nifty up a little bit and uh, crossing past and ending above an important technical level. Mid-cap, small-cap indices, both with gains of three quarters of a percent by the end of it. So that's essentially uh, how this Friday looked after markets, both Nifty and Sensex, made new all-time highs in trade yesterday, that is on Thursday. Now, I'll start with uh, what did well uh, today, uh, and it was finan financials, right? As I said, so Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServ. Remember, uh, the Bajaj Housing F uh, Finance Company uh, IPO, the listing is on Monday, uh, so it kept a lot of financials and housing finance stocks, which I'll talk to talk about in just a bit alive. Indescent Bank was up. Axis Bank was higher. In the tech space and large caps, there was Bipro and Tech Mahindra, which were up as well. On the downside, insurers have been uh, sort of pulling back a little bit. So SBI Life, HDFC Life, once again, the top two losers. There was also an Adani Ports, which was slightly down. Broader markets, uh, as I said, housing finance companies, Canfin Homes, GIC Housing, Home First was a big mover. Uh, but more financials. IAFL moved up sharply in the last 20 minutes, Was ended up about 7%. Uh, Edelweiss was up 10, locked up from the word go. Bandhan Bank was another one, which was up uh, 5%. Oracle Financial Services, Jubilant Pharma, Bharti Hexacom were some of the other gainers. There were also uh, gains in Godfrey Phillips, Linde India, Gravita India. Jewelers, right? TBZ, Senko, Tangamile Jewelers were some of the others which participated in the upside. Some pullbacks coming through, names like Patanjali, Zomato, and Narayana Hrudayalaya, the hospital company. All in all, I mean, neither here nor there, broader markets quite positive. So really nothing to complain about as we end a week in which the markets basically managed to squeeze higher, make new highs, and move to the higher end of uh, this range, basically, which seems to be expanding now. 
Going into next week, the big talking point, of course, is from global markets with expectations that the Fed is going to kick off a big rate cutting cycle. Back to you. Yes, that is the hope that there's going to be a rate cut announcement and a big one at that. That's likely to come in from the Fed. We will, of course, track the action. Prashant, many thanks for joining us. International gold price is hitting a fresh record high of $2,571 per ounce. A weakening dollar and optimism over a Fed rate cut, as Prashant is pointing out, is boosting gold prices. Many investors now pinning their hopes on a potential 50 basis point rate cut next week. Meanwhile, crude oil prices attempting a recovery after a volatile week. Brent had, in fact, dropped below $70 for the first time in two years. It's now hovering around the $72 mark. Now, court filings in Switzerland show that $311 million linked to the probe on the Adani Group have been frozen by authorities over the last three years. On the 9th of August, the Swiss Federal Court dismissed an appeal against sequestration of the accounts in question. The court asked the public prosecutor to analyze Shebi's show cause notice and the report of the Supreme Court Expert Committee. Court filings reveal that the investigation by Swiss authorities began in December of 2021, which is more than a year before Hindenburg accused the Adani Group of stock price manipulation. Now, in a two-year period between December 2021 to November 2023, Swiss authorities froze a cumulative account of more than $311 million from five accounts of companies with five different banks. Swiss authorities have not named the company under investigation or the Adani Group, but the court filings make specific references to the SEBI probe and the Hindenburg report. In a statement, the Adani Group has rejected the allegations, calling them baseless, preposterous, irrational and absurd. It said the group is not involved in any Swiss court proceeding and none of its accounts have been sequestered by authorities. Adani Group also said it has not received any request for clarification or information from authorities or any regulatory body. Now, SEBI Chief Madhubi Puri Butch and her husband have denied all allegations made by the Congress in a statement that runs into six pages. The SEBI Chief and her spouse have termed the allegations motivated and defamatory. The Congress party had alleged that SEBI Chief's husband was employed by the Mahindra Group and the conglomerate received favorable orders from the market regulator. Denying the charge, the Butches have said that Dhaval Butch was employed by Mahindra on merit and his experience. The statement also said that three out of five orders issued by SEBI do not pertain to Mahindra Group and one order was issued before Dhawal Butch started working with the Mahindras. The statement also says that Butch had disclosed her shareholding in Agora Advisory and Agora Partners right from 2017 when she joined SEBI. The SEBI chief also said that she recused herself from all matters pertaining to Agora Advisory or its clients. Remember, Agora Advisory is an advisory firm started by uh, Madhvi Puri Butch and her husband and uh, Madhvi Puri Butch is a 99% shareholder in that advisory firm. The primary markets have been abuzz with activity in 2024. The number of companies making their debut this year is already on par with the number of IPOs in 2023. Hormuz is standing by with the IPO report card for the year. Hormuz. Well, you know, the market may have had a very topsy-turvy ride through this year en route to record high levels. But for the IPO market, it has been smooth as a highway. Now, that's because 57 IPOs have already closed for subscription so far this year. The number in all of 2023 was also 57. But the differentiating factor as of today is the fact that the IPOs of 2024 have raised more money than all of 2023 put together. Now, according to this data from Prime Database, the IPOs of 2024 have so far raised almost 62,650 crore. Now, is well above the 49,400 crore that companies raised in the primary markets last year. Now, this list includes IPOs that were open for subscription but have not listed yet as well. Now, September traditionally has been a good month for IPOs and the seven issues so far have already raked in over 9,000 crore rupees. But August has been the best month of the year so far in terms of funds raised as over 17,000 crore rupees have been raised by 10 IPOs that month. Now, how have these IPOs fared? Now, five of these issues have returned 100% and more from their IPO price. Now, 30 of them have gained anywhere between 25% to 99%. And only seven such IPOs are currently trading below their IPO price. It shows you the kind of market that we have been in. Now, unlike 2021 and 2022, there have been no giant-sized IPOs this year. While 2021 had Paytm, which looked to raise over 18,000 crore, LIC surpassed that in 22 with a 21,000 crore issue. Now, Bajaj housing finance which has now become the talk of the town for the bids it received is the largest IPO of the year with around 
7,500 crores, followed by names like Ola Electric, Bharti, Exacom, and of course, Brain Bees. Now, 45 IPOs this year have delivered positive returns to shareholders. Now, among them, Jyoti CNC is the top performer with the stock more than tripling from its IPO price. Now, recent listings like Unicommerce and Premier Energy is also find a mention considering the strong moves they have seen just a few days after they listed. Now, among the few IPOs that have delivered negative returns so far include Capital Small Finance Bank, Popular Vehicles, among other such names. However, none of these names have any substantial downside from their IPO price, such as a 50% or more from their IPO price. It's been a big year already for IPOs and we still have three and a half months left. Now, at this pace, it will not be a surprise if by the end of the year, we end up doing a story saying IPOs have raised 1 lakh crore so far this year. Yes, we still have uh, three and a half months to go. Armas, many thanks for joining us. Now, gaming company Nazara Technologies will invest 982 crore rupees in Moonshine Technology, which owns real money gaming platform Poker Bazi. Now, as part of the deal, Nazara will buy a 47.7% stake in Moonshine Technology for 832 crore rupees through a secondary transaction. It will also inject 150 crore rupees in primary capital in Moonshine through compulsory convertible preference shares. The acquisition is expected to be completed within. 60 days. On to CNBC TV 18 exclusive, Hindustan Aeronautics may become the next state-run company to be accorded a Maharatna status. Government sources tell us that the public sector defence player could be upgraded by the end of the year. The upgrade will allow Hindustan Aeronautics to invest up to 15% of its net worth in a project without government approval. A probe by the Competition Commission of India has reportedly found that e-commerce giants Amazon and Flipkart violated India's competition laws. The two companies were found to be engaging in preferential treatment of select sellers on their shopping websites. As per report by Reuters, Amazon and Flipkart now have time to review the findings and file any objections before the CCI until the watchdog decides on any potential fines. In the past, both Amazon and Flipkart have maintained that their practices comply with Indian laws. U.S. auto major Ford Motor is gearing up to return to India by restarting its manufacturing plant for exports. And of course, the plant is in Tamil Nadu. The automaker recently engaged in discussions with Tamil Nadu's Chief Minister M.K. Stalin and submitted a letter of intent to the state government. Remember, Ford had stopped producing cars in India for domestic sale in 2021 after struggling to boost volumes. Jude is here with more Jude Ford driving back into Chennai. Well, driving right back into that plant in Tamil Nadu, which, remember, was at the eye of the storm after Ford decided to exit the Indian market and rather infamously shut down that legacy plant in Tamil Nadu just outside Chennai. In a statement, the Ford Motor Company there saying that it plans to reopen this plant in Marai Malai Nagar just outside Chennai, which will, of course, also mean that it will manufacture from here for its export market. Uh, like you pointed out, Shireen, the, the decision comes even as top executives at Ford met with Chief Minister M.K. Stalin on his, uh, on his current trip to the U.S. and ironed out the, the final touches to that re-entry uh, into Tamil Nadu itself. Uh, the, the statement also added that the decision underscores Ford's efforts and attempts uh, to leverage on its existing expertise in manufacturing in Tamil Nadu and its commitment to the Indian market. Now, interestingly enough, Ford does have an ongoing present-day solutions centre in uh, Chennai, which employs about 12,000. It's all set for a scale-up to about 3,000. So should this plant be reopened for manufacturing exports combined with the solutions centre and Ford's dealer network in these parts, uh, India could well become Ford's second-largest employee base worldwide. So a significant development in the automobile space and rather apt and poetic that it should come back to Tamil Nadu where it all began for Ford after that exit and the shutdown in 2021. So Ford there all set to drive right back into Tamil Nadu. Well, yes, a comeback story indeed. And staying with Tamil Nadu, the Samsung plant on the outskirts of Chennai has resumed operations. Sources say the plant is operating at 70% capacity, even as some workers continue to be on a strike. The strike's now on to its fifth day. Negotiations between the workers' union management and the state's labor officials have failed to reach an agreement over pay and working conditions so far. In the U.S., over 30,000 Boeing employees working on the U.S. West Coast have gone on a strike after rejecting the latest deal from the aircraft maker. Boeing's offer included a 25% hike over four years and a $3,000 bonus. The workers had sought a 40% wage hike and restoration of the defined benefit pension plan, among other demands. The strike comes at a time when the plane maker is wrestling with production delays and tighter scrutiny by regulators over safety. 
Shares of Adobe closed with losses despite its third quarter earnings beating Wall Street expectations, but the company's Q4 guidance fell short of estimates. Adobe has predicted revenue of $5.55 billion, which is below Wall Street's projections of $5.6 billion. Adobe's earnings growth has decelerated for four quarters. The company's guidance indicates that this could stretch to five consecutive quarters in Q4. Well, we wouldn't head into a break, but up next, after spending six months in jail, the Supreme Court grants bail to Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. The two-judge bench was divided on the legality of the arrest by the CBI. That and more when we return. Delhi's Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will walk out of the Har jail after six months. This after the Supreme Court granted him bail in the excise policy case registered by the CBI. Kejriwal was first arrested by the Enforcement Directorate on the 21st of March in an alleged money laundering case and subsequently by the CBI on the 26th of June when he was on the cusp of being released by the court in the ED case after being granted bail. In court today, there was consensus on giving him bail, but the two judges deferred on the legality of the arrest by the CBI. Justice Kant upheld the legality, saying that there was no procedural issue with his arrest by the CBI. However, Justice Ujjal Bhuyan called the arrest unjustified. He said, and I quote, the deprivation of liberty for a single day is one too many. Bhuyan also emphasized that the CBI should not operate like a caged parrot. भारत में संविधान से ऊपर कुछ नहीं है सुप्रीम कोर्ट का संदेश सिर्फ केजरीवाल जी की जमानत के बारे में नहीं इस देश के लोगों को आश्वासन के रूप में भी बहुत बड़ा संदेश दिया है कि कोई भी तानाशाह आके कोई तानाशाही करे आप चिंता मत करिए संविधान का सुरक्षा कवच इस देश के हर आम आदमी के ऊपर है दूसरा आज के सुप्रीम कोर्ट के ऑर्डर से ये भी साफ हो गया कि भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने ई और सी के माध्यम से जो साजिश रची थी कि पहले ई डी से गिरफ्तार कराइए और जब ईडी से जमानत मिलने वाली हो तो सीबीआई से गिरफ्तार करा लीजिए ये भी आज सुप्रीम कोर्ट के ऑर्डर से साफ हो गया कि सीबीआई की गिरफ्तारी केवल और केवल एक इंश्योरेंस अरेस्ट थी ईडी की जमानत से केजरीवाल जी बाहर आ जाएं उस उनको रोकने के लिए थी अरविंद केजरीवाल सिर्फ एक नाम नहीं है बल्कि एक ब्रांड है एक सच्ची ईमानदार राजनीति का और इस राजनीति और इस ब्रांड की मुझे लगता है बढ़ती लोकप्रियता के कारण ही अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को छह महीने के लिए जेल की सलाखों के पीछे जाना पड़ा आज उनकी रिहाई के इस आदेश से केवल आम आदमी पार्टी में नहीं बल्कि दिल्ली और देश में एक खुशी की लहर दौड़ गई है और एक लंबे संघर्ष के बाद अरविंद केजरीवाल जी लौट रहे हैं लगता है आ, कि आ, बहुत ज़्यादा समय तक झूठ के दम पर आप सच को कैद नहीं कर सकते provided by the Supreme Court today. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris is leading opinion polls post the presidential debate against a Republican rival Donald Trump. According to a Reuters poll, Harris has an advantage in the race to the White House, with 47% voters favoring her as against 42% favoring Trump. Addressing an election rally in North Carolina on Thursday, Harris called for another debate with Trump. However, the former president has rejected the possibility of one, saying that he had a monumental victory against Harris during Tuesday's presidential debate. As everyone saw two nights ago, we had a monumental victory over comrade Kamala Harris in the presidential debate. The public was not fooled. They saw right through it Kamala's lies and unprecedented partisan interference of two low-life anchors in low lives. For them to do what they did, and they wouldn't correct her on, like, Project 25. I don't know what the hell it is. I purposely have not read it. I could, but I don't want to. Because they never had my authorization. It was the same old show. Same old tired playbook we've heard for years. With no plan for how he would address the needs of the American people. Well, folks, look, it's time to turn the page. So I have a plan for you, and my plan is to give a $50,000 tax deduction for startup businesses. person that was on the stage with me the other night gets handed $400 million on a silver platter and then files for bankruptcy six times. Well, that is Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. No more debate. 
says President Trump. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Business 360. The news will continue right here on CNBC TV 18. Stay tuned. We're back in a minute with some more.